so no, 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 no. One. Okay, so it's. You like it cause you like skin. You said she's so pretty. I heard you say she the better chick, so you probably gonna put her on TV. You said I'm too dark skin, but I got the talent. So my name is Shanice Williams, and my major is television radio. The, I grew, I'm from the Bronx, New York. So before college, um, I, I thought it was all about hard work. You know, put yourself up by the push strap. Like, I'm doing well, why aren't these other kids doing it? Um, but that was when I was non-critical. <laughs> I had all white teachers. And um, yeah, joined senior year. I will say this because I'm just being honest. I, I'm going to say it. But people were surprised that I was the valedictorian. A lot of people didn't want me to be the valedictorian. And I didn't even know so much about racism or anything. Because it was all blacks and um, like pe people of color in the school. So it wasn't an issue. But I was like, um, is this you know, something uncommon because I'm black? Or like, I was like, I started to question, like, is this because I'm a female? Like, why are people so upset that I'm the valedictorian? You know, like people feel like I shouldn't have been there. Well, I didn't work hard enough, which I did. The curriculum wasn't very representative and very white dominant. And I wish I was taught like about my black leaders and people who really did stuff for the country and not, you know, obviously I wish that it was Afrocentric and, you know, the fact that like, how do you say, just include more cultures in it and not just make it like uh, Eurocentric. And you know, the fact that white people did all this, they did all that, and that black people only get what three pages in a textbook, like, or people of color in general, like, it's very, we were taught about our history very limited. And I wish that we just had time to reflect on that, especially in history. My peers, most of them are pregnant or like, they took these different routes and they feel like education is not for them because the system is telling them it's not for you. I'm going to give you these hard classes and the remedial courses, make you pay money, and you're not getting credit for it. So you could like, drop out, drop out. And that's what a lot of them are doing, and it really hurts. So now I, I just wish that this whole first-generation college student went in. But it's not. 50 years from now, they're still going to be a first-generation college student because somebody in my age group is not going to college. When I capped the college, I learned that the system was full of BS. I wasn't expecting to come and then be with kids who were so privileged. I thought I was doing a great job just being the valedictorian making it from my circumstance, but I was like, yo, I ain't nobody. <laughs> what, what I'm doing is not enough, so. I wish somebody would've told me, yo, this is an old white school, and prepare yourself, know that it's gonna be isolated, and know it's gonna be hard to make friends. I wish somebody just gave me a handbook or kept it real. You can't even say racism, racism in here without people turning pink and yellow, going crazy. Um, but yeah, it is very racist, and like, people, they don't wanna speak about race at the school at all, to have a problem, like, it affects, like, realize that there are students of color here. Realize that we are not as privileged as our white counterparts. Well, if you're just comfortable and sit back, that means racism is going to still happen, sexism is going to still happen, and things like that. So it's liberating to have the conversation in the first place and to see those students, um, a few, who finally get it and say, oh, I realize my white privilege, I'm going to go into an urban community and start helping. And not, like, do it because I feel guilty, but do it because I give a damn. I'm working hard. I started a student organization here. I've been applying to internships back to back. I don't have that leverage. I don't have a family who can help me. Honestly, I'm not at the end of the day, yeah, I, I am a person of color, but I am a human being. Mm -hmm. I'm liberated because um, just having the knowledge. I love it when I'm able to articulate it to my peers um, and to my family. And it has liberated me because although a lot of black people aren't able to attend, at least I am, and it can start with me me raising my voice, me writing an article or something. My kids will have um, a better life and things like that or more opportunity because I went to school. And I'm happy that I can be like the, the first in my family to go. Although it is sad, I'm very empowered by it because now my little brother wants to go and I almost cry because like he's only like 12 and he's like, oh, I want to go to college because you're going. So the fact that my baby brother's like, oh, I want to go to school and he's hype, I'm like, yo, I'm doing the right thing by being here. Although I'm going through so much, thankfully, he knows that he has some opportunity. So that is how I'm liberated by my education. Everything ain't what it seems. When you a young girl chasing your dreams. Everything ain't what it seems. When you a young girl chasing your dreams.